Thank you. Thank you. You have already met the minister. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, next is Supriya Suleji. Thank you, sir, for giving me an opportunity to speak on this very important discussion on demands for grants for 2023 by the, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Sir, I would like to start, because we all started the day today, by reading the Honorable Prime Minister's tweet. It's probably a coincidence that today is the discussion and the Honorable Prime Minister tweets about the same subject. And it's good news for the country. But I just, with my very limited knowledge, I wish Piyush Goelji was here today, but my very competent two ministers I heard, Anupriya ji, one of the young ministers in this team, which we are very proud of. I would like to ask a question that this 400 number that you have achieved, compliments to your government if you've achieved it, but is it by volume or is it purely because of inflation that has come? So I really need to know, is it directly through jobs and wealth created in this country? Or is it, I don't want to use the word fluff because it's probably a little unparliamentary in a debate, but that's what I mean. So if you could kindly explain to me as what is the reality of this number. The fact that the Honorable Prime Minister has reached a number, of course there has to be some great might behind it, but I just need to know whether it's in volume or is it in real numbers is my humble request to the Honorable uh, Minister here. There are two, three other questions. I mean, I would, it was very nice to see a very healthy banter between my two colleagues, our new MP who has just come, uh, Prajita, and my learned colleague who is a senior to all of us is Mr. Penaki Mishra ji about the budget. I think, sir, I appreciate your intervention and the way I would like to look at it in their own way. They are both right. Because I think what the Treasury Bench Minister uh, uh, member was trying to explain to us because what she was saying is last year what was asked for and then what was revised. But she, what we expect this year is what was revised is what it was spent. So that's what the government needs. So they should add to RE, not do B to B. So to last year's RE, they should have added, that should have been this year's B. Obviously, that means there's a cut. And I think Pinaki ji was absolutely right when he said, Pinaki ji has stand corrected, that it is a 20% decrease from last year's RE. So clearly it is a decrease. I understand she has, she speaks from the treasury bench. So they can't accept the truth. So I respect her point of view, but the reality is that there is a... Cut. Even, even RE is not the actual expenditure. Correct. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you, sir. Another question I would like to ask the Honorable Ministers is industrial infrastructure upgradation schemes. You are talking about industry so much. I appreciate that. But the point is that there's a mismatch between what your aims are and the funds allocated are. There were seven approved projects by your government, out of which only... According to the Standing Committee report, only one is done. So seven are left just high and dry. So is that why it matches that the money is not spent or allotted is a clarification we really need from you. Another thing is the intellectual property rights. So we are all very proud about the patents that are coming. But this government commits that it has reduced it from 12 months is what? But the Standing Committee report says that there is absolutely no improvement is what that report says. So innovation, fast-tracking, application, so much about technology gets sent. We, are, we want that to happen. You all all talked about startups. I'm proud to say that the Treasury Bench members also talked about startups. I'm happy to say that in your own government report, Maharashtra is the state where I come from. The highest number of startups doing well is from Maza Maharashtra. So I take a lot of pride when I say that, that uh, there are sometimes it's not just about which party we are, eventually we are one country. So I think we all at some point when it comes to such larger issues of the nation, I think we need to complement each other because it's eventually some issues are common, country first and then come our differences, ideological differences. So I think we have, uh, my state has done very well uh, in this particular topic. A lot said about pharmaceutical companies, sir, that's a big potential, it's a big ticket. But I appreciate what the, I mean, Shiv Kumar ji also said and both the Treasury Bench speakers said, and they gave a lot of credit to the Honorable Prime Minister, but I very humbly would like to say that one of these companies which the whole India is talking and taking credit for comes from Pune district where I belong, Serum Institute of India. And they didn't start this uh, vaccination in 2014. So there are few things happened. In our time, there was a vaccination in 60 years. 
or serum institute was started in the 50s by the punawala family and not they didn't start exporting in 2014 or 2022 they started vaccines and started exporting for the last 50 years so that is something which we must give credit to of course during covid there were no differences we had we were all of us versus the covid but let's put some facts on the paper that these are private companies and if this government feels so strongly about pharmaceuticals there is a pharmaceutical company which is owned by the chemical and fertilizers department in Pune district why don't you put in a good administration and run it efficiently so there will be serum there will be co-vaccine and there will be even our products which are run by the government and most pharmaceuticals in India which are doing exceptionally well are privately owned so industry has to be supported and I appreciate the point Pinaki ji said. Actually, they do live in fear. And it's not. I mean, every day you read on some newspaper or channel, somebody is getting raided. I'm not against rapes. If somebody is doing a bad job, has done something illegal, please raid them. But this government's data says, I'm not saying that, sir, that maximum raids that have happened have happened in the last two years. Is This is what their reply in the Rajya Sabha says. They, I don't speak ever without data. And what Pinaki just said is right. And I would like to quote, a very dear friend of mine who gave an interview, sir, I will not take his name with your permission because he may get raided after that. And I really feel that he's contributed a lot to this country. He says, I know industrialists today who think that this government is not open to any criticism. He explains that there is a fear that there will be consequences. That's why the industrialists today restrain. They don't want to say anything. Anyway, this is in the public media. Rahul Bajaj, unfortunately, is no more with us. He would say that later. With courageous, and this was uh, Noshad Forbes. Noshad said this in one of his interviews. Noshad, both are courageous, and I, I just hope my friend Noshad doesn't get raided after what I've said. Because what he he said a very fair thing. He says he, and I won't put this out of context. He's talked about governments all year, so I won't just blame y'all. Meri adat aise nahi hai ki tumara sab acha, mera sab acha aur tumara sab bura. Jo acha usko acha zarur bolungi. But I think fear is something because industry contributes to this nation. They are the real job creators. I'm not going to get into the job situation. The latest India Today story is exactly about government jobs because India's industry is not going at the speed it has grown or because of even the environment as well as so much of technology coming jobs are changing so everybody's looking for a government job and then what chaos happens we know everybody talked about one district one product it's a great project we are also happy to support it but what next I mean we have my district has been chosen for tomato my collector is waiting as what I all going to do so I would like to ask you all these all sound wonderful on paper and wonderful in speeches I think we need to stop this jingoism and get into some action is my request to this government so two three quick points I'd like to make this Dubai Expo so this was a very good intervention for last six months there is this Dubai Expo October to March and I would like to ask that what what have we achieved? I'm sure you have achieved something, but what is it can this country know? Otherwise, they say, ja ke sab Dubai ghum ke wapas a gaya, achhi baat hai. Unka tourism bad raha hai aur hamara paisa ja raha hai. Aisa nahi ho. So I would like to ask you that B2B or B2C, what investment have you achieved by this Dubai Expo in the last six months is what? Then there was so much talk about champion services sector, new trade policy. Okay, new trade policy. So my question to it is even Aprajita ji talked extensively about it. Time has come for a new policy. The whole dynamics of the world are changing. My question to this government is, can you commit to the floor of this house? Because she was, I mean, the Treasury branch member was saying that you want to do business with America, you want to do business, and new trade policies, all, they sound beautiful to the years. But does that mean what I worry about is that are you guaranteeing that every trade agreement that you do, 100% you will protect the farmer, especially what I worry is about milk. We've had a controversy in the past with milk, with onions, and then Commerce Ministry will put up its hand and says, oh, some legacy issue. Now there are no legacy issues left in this department. So don't tell us that everything is new, new agreements, new dynamics. Please take some ownership of what you're doing. So uh, please, I want to hear this in the reply. I don't want a vague reply that you will protect every farmer, yes. eat onion, be it vegetables, be it milk. So will you guarantee that? Sir, SEZs, this is one point I'd like to quickly make just two, just two questions I want to ask her. The PLI scheme, it's a very good scheme. I, I think we must all compliment it, but it's only for the big boys. How, is, how will the PLI scheme help the 
MSMEs, so I want to ask this question to them. Because Honorable uh, Narayan Rani ji, who's a minister in this cabinet, he himself has admitted that there is no PLI scheme for the small and medium. So are we only doing all these for the big boys? And if the big boys, and even in the scheme, sir, only once the production increases by 50%, will you benefit? Tomorrow there'll be NPS, and then I don't want legacy problems of this. Otherwise, these will be your legacy problems that we will inherit if we are there. So I think, please think this through. It's a very good scheme, but it has to be applicable for everybody. The most favored nation, that's a very important thing, especially with the changing dynamics. This entire department is totally interconnected to Ministry of External Affairs. So I would like to make sure that this department thinks all three. Please do not fall in for jingoism. This is a very serious department. It has repercussions on everybody, right from the top to the bottom to the last farmer in this country. So please think it through before you do everything. And I urge you that you love raids, please raid them. I mean, we don't have to do it. But industry is somebody who has co absolutely contributed for generations. I come from the Baba Kalyani report that everybody quotes is from my district again. The way the Puna Walas are from Puna district, Baba Kalyani is who's few things you will have heard of the SEZ. Unfortunately, I don't have much time, sir, so I won't see like yes. something for next. But please, industry is something we need to protect. There are hundred ways of correcting but putting them in jail and scaring them is not a solution. This is not going to get you better marks of doing ease of doing business because ease of doing business also is some report which when it suits you, you use it and when it doesn't suit you. And yes. if this ease of last point, sir, just for short, if ease of business this government was doing so well, then why have so many people become non-resident in India, especially not all? All the ones who fall in the top category of high network. In this country today, the high network people are preferring to keep one foot outside. So that really is what this government should think, that if our high network individuals are preferring to live in India, then the quote of my friend is absolutely true. So Thank please you. introspect Thank you. and think for the I future of this country. I Thank you. Mean,